Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. Now in today's video I will be focusing on the beautiful country of India. India is one of the most interesting places on this planet, with a wide range of cultures and wildlife. India is probably best well known for its food, and around 70% of the world's spices come from India. India is also home to the tallest statue in the world, as well as many other impressive landmarks. Many parts of India are also very wild, with endangered species such as tigers, gharials, and one-horned rhinos all calling India home. But as India also has the second largest population of any country in the world, some of its wildlife is suffering. Habitat loss and pollution threaten many animals, and today the Ganges is one of the most polluted rivers in the world. Alongside this pollution, India's native wildlife also has to battle invasive species, and I'll be going through just a few of them today. Now many of you have been asking for me to do this video for a little while, but it's been quite hard to research. I couldn't find much information on invasive land animals, apart from the obvious species such as feral cats. But on the other hand, in the water there are plenty of invaders. So I'll be going through five invasive and alien fish in India. And for our first species, we'll be heading to South America, as we have the Amazon selfing catfish. Now this catfish can be found in the Amazon River Basin, both in Brazil and Peru. In these waters, they are mostly a bottom-dwelling fish, and their diet mostly consists of algae and plant matter. Now as I'm sure many of you know, these fish and their family members are very popular in the aquarium trade. They are often sold as janitor fish or common plecos, and one of their main selling points is that they are a part of a cleanup crew. As they feed on algae, they can clean tanks, but their popularity in the aquarium trade has also led to some problems. Although they grow very slowly, they can reach a maximum size of around 50 centimeters, which often means they can outgrow their tanks. This is when some owners decide to release them into the wild, where they can soon become invasive. They have become a problem in the US and also South and Southeast Asia. They have a few adaptations that make them a very successful invasive species, and they've proven very hard to get rid of. They have the ability to breathe atmospheric oxygen, meaning that they can survive in adverse water conditions. Just like many other members of their family, they are also armoured, which means that they are difficult prey for some predators. In their native Amazon river basin, there is a very competitive ecosystem. This means that there are plenty of top predators, and many of them are expert pleco hunters. But in India, there are less predators that can take them out, and they have been able to multiply at an astonishing rate. In India, West Bengal is one of the worst affected areas, where these fish have invaded many of the wetlands. They not only feed on the native plants, but also outcompete the native species. So far, they've had a massive negative impact on the fishing industry, and as they're very hard to get rid of, it looks like they'll be around for a lot longer. But for our next species, we'll be heading over to Europe, as we have the brown trout. Now these trout are some of the most popular fish in Europe, as they're both loved by fishermen, and they're also one of the best tasting freshwater fish. In some areas, the brown trout is known as the sea trout, as some populations do swim out to sea, before returning to lakes and rivers to spawn. In their freshwater habitats, they are a predatory species, mostly feeding on invertebrates, but also sometimes targeting smaller fish. As I'm sure many of you know, the brown trout is one of the worst invasive species in the world. They were introduced into America in the second half of the 19th century, and today they can also be found in some parts of Africa, Asia, and Australia. One of the main reasons behind behind their introductions is the fact that some Europeans thought that they were the best fish around, and because they also got homesick. When Britain colonised India and Australia, they introduced the brown trout both for recreational fishing and for a source of food. This of course has had massive negative impacts on the ecosystem, especially in the Himalayas. The first brown trout introductions into northern India took place in 1868, and by the year 1900 brown trout were established. One of the native species that has suffered greatly is the snow trout, as the aggressive brown trout moved them out of their desired habitat habitat, forcing them further upstream. This has led to their numbers declining, and the native snow trout is only one of many native species that are suffering because of the brown trout. Because the brown trout is loved by anglers, and is also seen as a delicacy, less people are motivated to get rid of them, and it looks like they may stay in India for some time to come. But for our next species, we'll be moving over to Africa, as we have the African sharp-toothed catfish. Now these large catfish can be found in all sorts of freshwater ecosystems, from lakes to rivers and swamps. These fish in fact are so hardy and adaptable that they can even be found in some sewage systems. They are the second largest catfish in Africa, reaching a maximum size of around 1.7 meters. When they reach this size, they can feed on pretty much anything they find, and are even known to take down some birds. This catfish is very popular in Africa, as it's often bred through aquaculture. It's eaten in in many countries around the world, and is one of the most profitable fish to breed. It grows very quickly, it can tolerate poor water conditions, it often fetches higher prices than other farmed fish such as tilapia, and although I think it's cruel, they can also be sold live at markets. Again, this is another fish that's seen as one of the worst invasive species in the world, as it can now be found over large parts of Asia. It's thought that it was introduced into India in the 1990s, mainly for their use in aquaculture. Some of these specimens either escaped or were released, and once these fish enter an ecosystem, 
it's extremely hard to get rid of them. Like the self in catfish, they have the ability to breathe atmospheric oxygen and are even known to travel across land. This means that they can move from one body of water to the other, which stretches their distribution even further. As these are also very unfussy catfish, they feed on many different species of native fish and they also feed on their eggs and their young. Again, in its native range, there are many predators that can take them out, but in India, there are less potential predators as most of these invaders also come from farms. They are known to be carriers of parasites and diseases, and these can be passed on to the native fish. Today it is illegal to farm this fish in India, but I think this step is too little too late. But for our next species, we'll be heading over to North America, as we have the alligator gar. Now again, this fish can be found in a wide range of habitats, but tend to prefer slower moving water. Most are found in the southern United States, and also into Mexico. This fish obviously got its name of alligator gar, because of its alligator shaped head and teeth. These gar are stalking ambush predators, and are primarily piscivores. Despite this, they are known to eat waterfowl and small mammals, and this nutrient-rich diet has led to them being one of the largest freshwater fish in the world. The largest alligator gar on record measured around 2.6 meters long, but it's thought that they could get even larger than this. Now, I wouldn't exactly call the alligator gar invasive in India, but it is an alien species that has been recorded there. Although these fish are giant and relatively hard to care for, they are also sometimes sold in the aquarium trade. As they grow so large, many people tend to release them. And as they're an apex predator, this can have a massive negative impact on the ecosystem. In Kerala, after the floods of 2018, Arapaima and alligator gar were caught in four separate rivers. It's thought that these specimens may have escaped from aquaculture facilities during the floods. As they are much larger than Kerala's native fish, they have the potential to turn invasive. But so far, they have not established self-sustaining populations. So although they have the potential to become a very problematic invasive species, they haven't established themselves yet. But for our final species, we'll be heading to Central America, as we have the three spot cichlid. Now these fish are normally found in lowland areas, normally around submerged roots and vegetation. In these areas this fish is a predatory species, mainly feeding on invertebrates as well as other smaller fish. As this is quite an attractive cichlid, it's also kept in the aquarium trade and is believed to be one of the species that is hybridized to make the flower horn cichlid. In the aquarium they're known for being very aggressive and territorial and this behavior would also make them very problematic if they were to become invasive. It's unknown when these fish were first introduced into India, but the specimens almost certainly came from the aquarium trade. In 2020, a biodiversity study took place at one lake in India, and this lake was found to be infested with these cichlids. They were later discovered to be present in other lakes in India, and they are quickly becoming a problem. As they are a highly predatory species, they feed on many of the native fish, and this can completely ruin the fishing economy. As this is a relatively new discovery, we don't know their true numbers at this point, but they could become a major problem in the future. But that's about it for this video. If you know of any land animals that are invasive in India, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.